Hey everybody, welcome to the vlog again. It's more than two months since I've been out recording a vlog, but it's time to get out again. I'm really glad that things are starting to get better. What I'm thinking here is to have two shots, basically. The first shot I want to, let me just tell you the camera. Um, so the first shot, I want to use these rocks as an entry point in my, uh, in my shot and have the rock as uh, in the background as my subject and then I want to do a, a photo something like this where I'm having these trees to the right and to the left as stopping elements the only problem would be the Sun if the Sun is making its appearance and the forest starts to be full of uh, full of light it's gonna be tricky it's gonna be difficult so the sun is kind of kind of getting out from the clouds but i'm hoping that this is only temporary so let's let's do the framing and let's wait for the light to get better i made my composition and in uh, at settings i'm at uh, f11 iso 100 and six of a second and i'm having that foreground element in my uh, in my shot and after I'm doing this shot, I'm gonna do very quickly uh, because I'm hoping for the sun not to come out of the clouds and have the forest uh, in flat light. So I think I got it. And now this is the second shot with tenth of a second F11 and ISO 100 where I wanted those trees framing, uh, framing my subject. It's a little bit annoying that the sun is keep, it keep, it keeps coming out from behind the clouds. Of course, uh, where am I to decide when the sun should appear behind the clouds, right? But it's a little annoying. <laughs> I'm seeing that shot in the distance over there, the way the trees kind of uh, bend over the trail and I think if I go with a really long focal length I will be able to get an interesting photo so let's see let's do first a a photo in portrait mode okay quickly quickly and another one and then I'm always um, I'm always switching and doing also a landscape format because uh, when you're getting back home and you're uh, looking at the photo on your computer you don't know exactly what is working better uh, okay the sun came out again so we have time to talk so why I'm doing a portrait shot and a landscape shot even if I like more one of those shots maybe at some point I would need the same photo in a vertical format or vice versa for example uh, when you're posting on Instagram it's better to have them in vertical format because it takes um, a lot of space from the screen of the uh, phone and it's much better uh, viewed and by the algorithm so yeah just a few more seconds and the light is going to be okay again flat light okay it's 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 okay so let's do the the, the landscape format and also i'm making sure that I'm not forgetting to polarize. When you are inside the forest, polarizing is really important. I mean, uh, a forest with the leaves not polarized, they look, they, they're not looking that good. So, okay, I'll be going, I'll leave you there. <laughs> just kidding, I'll take the camera. I'll just walk a little bit because it looks good in the vlog. I'm doing again, 
a landscape format and then a portrait approach. I'm coming to grab you to take you with me on the trail. So let's just go. Let's go, go, go. stopped again because I saw a really interesting shot to my back. This is a this is only a uh, landscape orientation photo. You can do this in portrait mode. There is no there are no elements that justify uh, um, this. Sometimes uh, taking a photo in uh, in a portrait mode it's not possible. Sometimes it's pleasant only to the eye. Sometimes it's interesting to watch and, and experience with your own eye. But when you're photographing it, it's, it's, not, it's not the same. And I'm thinking that this is happening because it's connected to um, feelings and emotions. And when you're taking them uh, off the photo, um, that element it's not that interesting. I have to reposition myself in a different way. I don't want to have sky visible to the branches because it looks bad. You have those white spots. And even if you have them exposed properly, they still don't, don't work. So I have to get my tripod a little lower. See, I'm, see, I'm uh, I'm avoiding having this leg of the tripod in front of me because I could uh, I could see it because I'm photographing with the 24 millimeter lens. So yeah, this is okay. We also have some beautiful roots in this tree. Of course, there will be a little bit of sky. I mean, I I just can't get rid of. Uh, of all the sky in the photo, but it's uh, it's manageable. It's okay, and have uh, you have also a diagonal in the trail that goes from the left to right. I think it's it's okay. This photo works, and the settings are uh, f11 and fourth of a second. And even though the leaves are moving, it's not a big problem. Um, you're capturing the leaves move. Now, if you don't like this, then you have two options. You open up your aperture, but not too much. You have to stay at at least 6.3 and you bump up the ISO. And this, this way you get a shorter exposure time that will freeze the motion of the leaves. Lately, I'm receiving more and more questions uh, on Instagram related to forest photography. And the majority of those questions are related to how I'm finding interesting um, photos in the forest. Well, um, if I would have to summarize in just a few tips, well, tip number one would be find a good, for, a good forest to, to photograph. If you're having a chaotic forest, if uh, the trees are not thick enough, then it's not that it's not that interesting to photograph. Even if the forest is chaotic, if the trees are looking interesting, then you can find interesting shots. Uh, the second tip would be learn to expose. This is very important. Search for areas of darkness followed by areas of light and try to focus on that light and place yourself in the darkness. Uh, tip number three, uh, try to create order. Uh, if you're capturing the chaos, your photo will speak chaos. So order means that you're having a few, just a few big elements in your shot that kind of direct the eye. You create a path and this path can be uh, an actual trail, an actual path, or it can be uh, trees that are curving. Depending, it, it depends a lot on what type of forest you're having, where you are. Um, tip number four, go and photograph. Um, during the, the early morning and after sunset or during sunset, flat light is okay, sunrise and sunset light is okay, fog is even better, uh, but not thick fog. 
So th these would be these would be a couple of tips for photographing forests. Right now I'm having an area where I will show you exactly what I mean by learn to expose properly. It's very it's very obvious once I show you, but I saw many people doing this mistake. So this tip with exposing properly is something that I seen done wrong in many occasions. So let me just place the camera over here and you have to focus over there in that area. So yeah, right now it's also polarized. Try to make an abs uh, abstraction of what is happening over here. This is also a photo that presents an opportunity for a portrait mode. So you can get a really dramatic shot right from the start. So I'm doing now, it's a portrait mode. So I'm F11 fifths of a second, ISO 100. I received a comment from someone complaining that I talk a lot and I know I'm talking a lot but uh, if you just want to experience my photos you can go on Instagram and take a look at my photos if you just want to see if you just want to see beautiful shots of nature the U YouTube it's full of videos like that but if you want to hear about the process behind uh, and the work that goes and the thinking that goes behind taking my photos and creating my photos then you'll have to hear what I have to say. I'm creating these vlogs. I mean, if, if you're going to hear what I have to say, believe me that you're gonna be a better photographer. You're gonna be a person that understands what is happening in nature, what is happening inside his head, why he or she's stopping to photograph something, what are the reasons for which you should take a photo, how you should think about it. This is also what I'm teaching uh, in my post-processing uh, tutorials and videos that you find on my website. So um, the things that I have to say, I have to say them. So this was it for the vlog from today. The first vlog after coming back and um, I hope you enjoy it. The sun is out again so I can't photograph anymore. <laughs> so, uh, Bye bye and until next time, keep on photographing, it's the only way to get better. Thanks for watching, thanks for being a subscriber, bye bye.